up, guys? My name is Colin Hellens, and I'm a mixing engineer. I've worked with people like XXXTentacion, Kanye West, and Trippy Red. One thing I'm known for in the industry is my hard hitting beats and my quick turnaround times. Talking about quick turnaround times, Waze has challenged me and sent me this trap beat that I've never heard before. And today I'm gonna go over it with you guys and mix it with very minimal plugins to make sure it's still gonna be a quality mixed beat. So let's see what we're working with. Let's go. First few things that I noticed is that the beat is lacking some solidness in the low end. So we're going to address that. But also very important, the mid range of the beat, in my opinion, is a little bit lacking. So I want to bring that out more, give it more detail so it's more right in your face. And then there's one thing that is kind of annoying, which is a percussion sound, which is also in the mid range, but it's really piercing. So I'm going to address that with two plugins, very simple and easily. Let's dig it. So my weapon of choice, which is a great one, almost like a swish knife, is the SSL channel strip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly add in a little bit of low end so you can hear the lows come up more, a little bit of the high end so you can hear more detail and more crisp in the high end. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the mid range so you can hear the track come to life and become more present. So here we go. So as you can hear, there's slightly a bit more low without it overbearing the whole record and getting too much and too distorted. Uh, some more detail in the high end so you can hear the crisp high hats better. And the last thing that I added was a little bit of mid range. So I'll play it again and we'll take out the mid range and add it back in so you have more of a better understanding of what's happening there and also hear that it becomes more to the forefront as far as the track goes. So I think this is a great starting point for us. Off the bat, the first thing that I hear is the low end. I want to get it a little bit more punchiness than it has already. And once I've done that, I want to move on to a different part of the beat. In this part of the beat, there's a percussion sound to me that's a slightly too loud. So I'm going to attenuate it a little bit with dynamic EQ. And as far as the low end goes, I feel like the kick needs a little bit more punch. I don't want to do it with a transient designer or a static EQ, so I'm going to use dynamic EQ as well to bring it forth a little bit. So what I'm going to use is the Waves F6, the RTA. So I actually have a frequency analyzer in there and I can easily see what is going on and where I want to attenuate and maybe boost a little bit, but I want to do it dynamically so it stays musical. So let's see what I did. So I used the fifth band, which is about 2,500 hertz, where in a minute we can see the percussion peak a lot. And I'll show you what I did as far as dynamic EQ goes to tame it a little bit and make it more even with the rest of the record. And this is how it was without that dynamic EQ. So 
So as you can hear, by cleaning up the percussion sound, we created more clarity for the kick as well, because there were conflicting frequencies there. And by cleaning it up, it made the kick come out better, as well as the percussion sound even better in the mix. This happens quite a bit, where you think that maybe the kick is the issue, but in essence, it's something else, like we had in this example, where the percussion is the problem. And by cleaning up the percussion, we got a cleaner kick. So let's move on to the next part of the beat. So as you can see, the percussion sound is less prominent, but it's not static, which means that right there where the percussion sound is sitting is also where the snare is sitting. And what I don't want to do is remove anything when the snare is playing so that the snare becomes less prominent and less hard hitting. I set the band to mid-range because when I play it back in a second, you will hear that the percussion is sitting right in the center and anything else surrounding it, I don't want to touch, even in the stereo field. So let me play it back and then switch the sides and solo so you can hear that the percussion is clearly sitting in the mid-range. So by cleaning up the percussion sound, we noticed that I like to keep the sides there because it gave the ambience of the track and it helped out with that, with the little reverb that's happening on the sides of the percussion. But the main issue with the percussion was sitting in the mid band. So not the sides, the mid. So we cleaned that up and as you can hear, it leaves the sides intact, which means it leaves the ambience that helped the track intact. So let's move on to the kick. So the kick drum, I used the first band. I kept it in stereo because I didn't feel like putting it in the mid or the sides that that was going to give me any different results. I just wanted to treat the whole spectrum of the low end, both sonically center image as the frequency as well. But I didn't want to do it static either. So let me play it back with out the first band in so you can hear how the kick actually is sitting in the record as is for now. And then I add it back in and I'll show you what is happening with the kick drum and the punch and how much more prominent it gets. So as you can hear with that band active, the kick gets a little bit more punchy. And without it, it kind of blends a little more back to the background, which is cool, but I'd rather have a little bit more punch happening because it, it makes the track more alive and more musical. So what I did is on the low band, let me solo it. As you can hear, that's pretty much where the body is of the kick drum. So I just made a bell instead of a shelf because with a shelf, I didn't want to get any of the rumble to come alive as well. I'd like to keep that solid and just focus on the meat and potatoes, so to say, of the kick itself. So as you can hear, it's around 74 hertz and I just added a little bit, not, not a lot. It just, it goes dynamically between nothing when it hit, when it doesn't hit, of course, to max about 4 dB to get nice, to get it lies a little bit punchy. So that's how the drums and the two track becomes more alive. What we've done now is added some EQ. So we've enhanced the elements of the beat that we want to have, the low end, the, the crisp and shininess on the high end, and a little bit more mid-range presence. So it's more in your face. And then afterwards, we remove the one percussion sound that was slightly mixed too loud in the beat, as far as I'm concerned, my opinion goes. We removed that a little bit, tamed a little bit made the beat sound more cohesive and we added a little bit more punch to the kick so it knocks a little bit harder.
So the next plugin I want to show you guys is the Eberron Final plugin. Let me pull it up. Let me play a section of the beat and let you hear it as we have it now with the SSL channel strip on there, with the pointiness in the low end and the removed percussion that's tamed it a little bit, I should say, uh, with the dynamic EQ. And then I'll bring in the Abbey Road vinyl plugin and let you hear the subtle difference that happens between the AB of the Abbey Road vinyl plugin and the record as we have it so far. So let me play it back without the vinyl plugin active yet, and then I'll activate it so you can hear the subtle difference of what it sounds like. As you can hear, it's so subtle, but it's just a little, I'd say 1% that makes your record sound slightly better than anything else that you might have been playing with or hearing or whatever the producer has given to you or as a producer to give it that nice little warmth, in my opinion, that a lot of records miss if we're just keeping it with standard EQ and compressing and whatever else you might do. This is the little harmonic distortion brilliance, I almost want to say, that makes the record come alive a little bit more and embraces you with all its its like sound, if I may say it that way. Okay, so now that I've treated the two track with both static EQ as well as dynamic EQ and added a little bit of harmonic distortion to make the overall thing come alive a little bit more, I'm gonna play you back to track with the plugins enabled and the plugins disabled so you can hear the difference from where we started and where we've ended up now. So let's have a listen. As you can see, it went from a dull two track to a very much alive and vibrant two track. So the last thing I want to add on to this, I love to experiment with parallel compression wherever needed. The beautiful thing about parallel compression is that it does not alter the original sound too much. So instead of putting a, a cue or a compressor on the two track and pretty much going ham on it, it's going to change the sound drastically to the point that it no longer sounds like what it sounds like originally, if that makes sense. So to make it more subtle, but still get the results that you want to have, parallel compression is a great way of doing so. So what I did is just a simple routing, bus to an aux tracks, bus 5.6 is going to be sent into bus 5.6 of an auxiliary track. And on the auxiliary track, I put the Waves DBX 160 because it's very snappy. So it works great on anything rhythmic, which in this case, the two track is very rhythmic. And I follow that with the Pew Tech. So the Pew Tech is a pool tech emulation, which is known for very minimum phase. And you can put a bunch of low end in there without it sounding too harsh. So let's play it back without the auxiliary track active and then I'm going to play it back with the auxiliary track active and bypass the plugins and tell you a little bit about what's going on with the plugins. So this is the two track without the parallel active. And this is going to be the two track with the parallel and the plugins active. You can hear it became much more fuller, much more body. And again, the low end came up a little bit more because that was the whole plan that I had when I heard it after we did all the treatment with the EQ, the dynamic EQ and a little bit of harmonic distortion, I still felt like it needed a little bit more of a lift in the low end. So what I did is with the auxiliary track, pretty much compressed the whole record down pretty hard by about 10 dB of gain reduction. 
And then what I did is I added a bunch, as you can see, a bunch of 60 hertz in there, but also removed everything at three kilohertz. Because what I did want to do is add in a bunch of that mid range that's pretty harsh. I kind of pretty much wanted to have a slope that goes high up to high on the bottom, low on the tops. So let me play it back again with both plugins in action. And then what I will do as well is I'll bypass the auxiliary again so you can hear it without the parallel and you can hear it again with the parallel active. So this is without it again. So you can instantly hear that the effect is subtle, but at the same time, it gives you enough of a body and a low end boost that in my opinion, the two track needed. All right, now that we've treated the whole entire two track, we improved it by enhancing the low end. We increased the presence of the mid range. We took care of the piercing percussion element sound. And finally, we finished it off with some parallel compression to bring out more punch and weight. So let's take a listen to the two track before and after the challenge. Here's the before. And after. Okay, guys, that's how I fix trap drums real quick with just a few plugins. Check the link below. I left my presets there. Please try them out on your project. Comment underneath this video. Let me know how it goes. Thank you, Ace, for the challenge. And I'll see you guys soon. Hey. Bye.